I've been living um, with a secret. Ever since Apple Silicon came out, I've been having Apple Silicon machines through here. I've been testing them, but I haven't been fully honest about my transition to Apple Silicon. I've been keeping around a secret MacBook and I haven't kept it out in the open. It's been living right over here in this dark corner of my office. In fact, if you go back and look at all my videos for the past few years, you'll see this sitting here. Why do I have a 2015 MacBook Pro here with the Big Sur operating system? The answer has to do with this right here. This is the RME Fireface 800. It's an audio interface and the Fireface should give you a hint as to why I need to still use this crazy contraption here. If you guessed Firewire, you're right. We've got a Firewire cable going from it to a dongle, surprise, surprise, that's being adapted to the Thunderbolt port on this Mac. And this will allow me to use my Fireface on this machine. You can see it's detecting some of the audio as I'm speaking. Now you might say, Alex, that's crazy. There's plenty of audio interfaces out there that you can use with your Apple Silicon Mac. And you're right, even RME, this company right here, they make plenty of new hardware that's Apple Silicon compatible. Their software Total Mix, that's the mix and routing for audio, that's compatible. If you check, does it arm? It's even listed on there as Apple Silicon tested. Fireface 800, it represents something in my life. It's the first really pro style of audio interface that I ever bought. It was not cheap. It was pretty expensive for me. I bought that thing, I don't know, probably 12, 13, 14 years ago. I don't even remember, but it's been a tank. It's worked all along and the audio quality is mwah, pristine. This company, RME, they're from Germany. They make incredible audio interfaces and they make amazing drivers that are just bulletproof until Apple Silicon came out and ruined it all. RME tried with Apple Silicon as far as they could. On their driver downloads page, they still have the Fireface 800 version 3.41 for Mac OS. It supports Intel and M1. That got released in 2021. That was the latest release for the drivers. I have that installed, of course. And it works, but I've had some issues. First of all, big shout out to RME for even supporting such an old interface. Other companies will just say, Bye bye. Yeah, we're not going to support that anymore. Spotify is a good example of that. Uh, well, I'm not going to talk about that. There's plenty of other companies that basically screw you over. Just watch Lewis Rossman's channel for some excellent examples and very colorful descriptions. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. RME is not such a company. They stand behind their products and they stand behind them quite well. However, there's only so far they can go. As soon as Apple Silicon machines came out and I bought my MacBook Pro that I was going to use as my daily driver, M1 Max, I was super excited to plug it in. The problem is Firewire is not around anymore. I have to use a dongle like this one right here. I'm covering my eyes so my camera will focus on it. This is Firewire right here and it converts to Thunderbolt, but the old Thunderbolt connection like this one. And this was fine when I was using it on my iMac, which I didn't hide. That was standing there for all my videos and MacBook Pros from that era before everything went USB-C. So this will work with those machines. What about the new machines? The new machines that have only USB-C on them, such as the Apple Silicon machines. Well, there's no such thing as a connection that goes from Firewire to USB-C. I looked, couldn't find one. And by the way, these little adapters, hard to find these days too. And they fetch up to $140 for this dongle on eBay, which is insane to me. I spent a lot of money on Apple dongles in the last few years, but there is another option. This is another dongle. So it goes from Thunderbolt, the old style Thunderbolt to USB-C style Thunderbolt. See, it's got a little bolt on it. I had to do this. Um, dongle into a dongle into the firewire cable into my computer and of course it didn't work very well i'm surprised that it even worked at all now to get this even working you need to update your software you need to have big sur which my intel macbook still has on it now they say that it supports uh, other operating systems after big sur but i found that uh, i had issues i don't know what was causing the issues was it the fact that i updated my operating system to something like ventura was it the fact that it was apple silicon was it the crazy configuration of dongles but eventually my firewire interface called fireface tried saying that 10 times fast it started disconnecting and it disconnected randomly and periodically but it would always do it and that's not something I can do. I need reliability and reliability is something RME is known for. Now the audio quality was still perfect, still pristine. The connection issue 
bothered me. Besides that, there was some other things you had to do to get it working on Apple Silicon. For example, you had to um, change the startup security policy. You had to boot the M1, or they call it the M1, but it's Apple Silicon, into recovery mode, go to utilities, startup security utility, and then you had to change the security policy to reduce security. That doesn't feel good. It worked after doing this procedure, which they outlined quite well over here, but I still feel a little bit weird reducing security of my machine. I don't want to do that. So even after updating the drivers, reducing the security of my Apple Silicon Mac doing a delicious dongalicious it still would disconnect periodically and I decided okay I'm just gonna buy a brand new audio interface that's gonna be Thunderbolt or because I don't need eight channels at this time all I'm doing is really these YouTube videos now for audio I'm not recording bands anymore like I used to back in the day in my basement now I can just get a they have something called a baby face which is this little thing I could get something like that it's still not cheap but it'll give me the quality I want it'll give me the total mix software and it'll work with my modern computer. And then I realized, wait a minute, I have a travel audio interface that I use when I'm out on the road. It has its own issues though. Right next to my MacBook and my RME audio interface, I have this one now that I've set up. This is an Apogee Duet. And you can see, uh, you can see the little lights going up and down when I'm talking. This thing also has pretty good quality. Their support for software is not that great. They're mostly known for their audio A to D converters, analog to digital and digital to analog converters, not necessarily their software support. In fact, for that audio interface, they said, okay, you know what? We're not gonna make Apple Silicon versions of that software. It's just gonna be Intel. And that's why I still have my Duet and Apogee, those are my leftover Intel processes on my Apple Silicon machine. But it's been solid. It's connecting through USB. It's connecting to my new Apple Silicon machine and it works. Eventually I'll upgrade one of these things to, uh, I don't know, something more modern. But if it works and all it's doing is just sitting there and I'm not actively interacting with it, why mess with a thing that works? If it starts giving me problems, whew, out of here. But for now, it's being a good little interface. Now, as far as my little secret goes, I'm happy with using the RME audio interface when I use it through the MacBook. And there's no point in um, getting something else like uh, Mac Mini over there, even though it would take up less space because I already have the MacBook and selling the MacBook and getting Mac Mini was just cost me extra money. Why would I do that when this works fine? So I'm kind of happy to get that off my chest after all this time and let you know that not everything works on Apple Silicon, especially if you want to use older hardware that interfaces with your machines. Sometimes vendors Vendors can support the software as far as they can, like RME, and sometimes vendors don't, and they make you buy the latest stuff, like Apogee. Now, since the M1 Max, I've sold that one already. I've been using the M2 Max, and that's been my daily driver for the past, oh, um, over a year now. And I recently made a video describing my experience with it right over here, if you wanna check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.